In episode three, you get more backstory on how Hassan met Claire. At that fancy prep school, there were a couple of guys who were up to no good. They started making trouble in Claire's neighborhood, and Hassan came to the rescue. Or so he thought. She actually got pissed off, saying, you know, girls don't need your help. We're not just fragile little beings. But then she realized she was being pretty rude, and they struck up a friendship. Now, those same guys later on continued to give the couple a hard time, and he tried to defend her honor once again, but he got his ass kicked. As she's cleaning him up, he tried to kiss her, but she pulled back because she wasn't really looking for that kind of relationship. She was just looking for a friend. Of course, as time went on, it actually did become a relationship. And while Hassan was off at that prestigious school, Inspector Dumont went to go meet with Hubert Pellegrini to find out how the investigation was going. And while Dumont seemed like an asshole because he treated Hassan like an asshole, he actually believed that Hassan's father was innocent. The first clue was the fact that he just kept denying repeatedly that he wasn't involved, but the bigger clue was the fact that he didn't fit the profile at all. And then also, he found out that Hubert Pellegrini took out an insurance policy on the necklace about a week before it went missing. Now, Hubert said it was because he talked to a friend who said the necklace was undervalued, and he was willing to give Dumont the friend's information so he can clear him. At this point, though, Dumont definitely suspects that Hubert Pellegrini had something to do with the necklace missing. But Dumont did his job. He continued to dig around, and he found nothing. In fact, Hassan's father was nowhere near the safe when the necklace went missing. Pellegrini continues to point to the fact that Hassan's father's prints were all over the safe, but Dumont tells him that the experts believe the prints were planted there. Pellegrini asked Dumont, well, then who planted them there? But Dumont doesn't say anything because it's pretty obvious who Dumont thinks planted them. Dumont does tell him, though, that he's well aware of all the influence that Pellegrini has over him, but he's planning on seeing this investigation out. And that's when Pellegrini threatens Dumont's wife, and Dumont's mood changes. Pellegrini then lays out the entire plan, getting a forced confession from Hassan's dad by using Anne to do it. Anne was nothing more than a puppet in this whole thing. She truly believed that he was getting a reduced sentence when he wasn't. And that was the day that Dumont sold out to Pellegrini. But present-day Hassan needs to get to present-day Dumont. And present-day Dumont has been promoted to police commissioner. Hassan has hooked up a bunch of cameras all over Dumont's house and is just surveilling him. And Dumont has no idea he's being watched. He waits for Dumont to go to work, where Dumont is in a meeting with the mayor. And that's when Hassan walks in in a disguise as an IT guy. He tells Dumont that he needs to talk to him about his computer because while they were doing an update, they found a bunch of porn. And that's pretty embarrassing, so they go out in the hallway to discuss it. And Dumont says, yeah, do whatever you want, man. Get rid of it. But Hassan says, I'm not getting rid of it. You need to get rid of it. It's your computer. I'm not touching it. Now, Hassan almost gets his cover blown by another staffer who doesn't recognize him as the IT guy. And Dumont asks to see some identification, but Hassan makes a big scene. And just to keep Hassan quiet from the whole screaming, you've got porn on your computer, Dumont agrees to walk with him. They go down in a hallway where Hassan uses pressure points to knock Dumont out, take his cell phone, and he breaks the SIM card. Security camera footage does catch Hassan wheeling out a giant trunk to an unmarked vehicle. When Dumont wakes up, he's in a dingy room tied up with Hassan in another room. Hassan has video cameras set up and speakers, and he's talking through a voice changer so Dumont can't recognize him. He's also got a projector set up, and he starts to put pictures of his own father on there, as well as the autopsy report of his suicide and the police files. And the whole link in all this is that Dumont is all over all of these files. Dumont tells him that that's normal procedure because he was in charge of the investigation. But Hassan tells him, that's ridiculous. You had one suspect. You didn't search that hard for the necklace. Why did you frame him? But Dumont sticks to the script, saying that Hassan's father was guilty because of, quote, evidence. Dumont then asks him, does this have anything to do with the robbery at the Louvre? I mean, this is the same necklace. It's 25 years later. But Hassan doesn't answer him just shutting off the microphone. Hassan waits a little bit because he's done some digging and he wants to incentivize Dumont to try to tell him what really happened to his father. And he's found out that Dumont took money from some pretty shady people, people that human traffic, drug dealers, because the job of commissioner didn't pay that well. And no one knew about this because he was getting paid via a secret bank account, but the funny thing about secret bank accounts these days is they're not so secret if you look for them. This really upsets Dumont, who screams that he was doing it for his children, to put them in good schools, and to provide for them a better life. Hassan demands to know what actually happened to his father, but Dumont is sticking to the script that he was guilty, he hung himself, and that's it. But that's when Dumont says, you know, Babakar, who was Hassan's father, yeah, Babakar fucked up too. I mean, he was an immigrant who didn't have a euro when he came over here. I don't blame him for doing what he did, but Hassan cuts him off. Someone must have framed you to put that police report together. But Dumont says, I didn't have to. The evidence was there. Dumont then asks for some water, and since Hassan isn't a savage, he brings him a bottle. And as he's waiting for his next step, Hassan gets a phone call from Claire 
because Claire is wondering what they're planning on getting Raul for his birthday. And Hassan has completely forgotten about this, and he tries to play it off like he hasn't, but Claire can see right through it. She asks what's keeping him so busy, but then realizes maybe she doesn't want the answer, and Hassan says, yeah, you don't want the answer. She does tell him, you know, just because we're not sleeping together doesn't mean you can't talk to me, and while he appreciates that, he's not willing to tell her what he's up to. After hanging up with Claire, Hassan goes to plan number two to try to get Dumont to talk, and that's using video that he got from Dumont's house and putting a deep fake on it. A very convincing deep fake, where Dumont is talking about liking children. I mean, videos that if they ever saw the light of day, it would ruin Dumont's life. Dumont yells at him, I told you the truth, and you just don't like it. And Hassan, who at this point is very angry and very animated, yells, tell me why you frame my dad. And at that moment, Hassan knows that he really messed up. Because Dumont remembers Hassan and now knows who is behind all of this. Dumont pleads for forgiveness from him because he does feel bad about how he treated him back in the day, but tells him that what Hassan is doing to him is the same thing that he's claiming Dumont did to his father. The only difference he claims is that he is innocent. He says, if you untie me, I won't turn you in. You can just disappear. And Hassan, knowing at this point that the jig is up, tells him that he forgives him and then he takes off. Now, this whole time, the cops have been trying to find Dumont because he's the police commissioner. They start to kind of go in a panic mode when they realize that the SIM card from his cell phone has been taken out. Although Youssef says that the police cell phones are different, and he's able to triangulate a location of where they think that Dumont is. But when they head there, all they find is the van, the driver from the van, and in that trunk is a clown doll dressed like a police officer. They were fooled. They start to question the driver, but he claimed that he was hired off of Craigslist, paid $200 just to pick up the trunk and drive around City Hall a few times and then head home. They start screaming at him, well, where did you drop the guy off that took the police commissioner? But he keeps saying, I dropped him off at City Hall. And only Yousef is understanding what this guy is saying. So finally, Yousef speaks up and says, guys, he's still at City Hall. Now, the rest of the police officers think that's absolutely crazy. But Yousef says, well, it's what Arsan Lupin would do. And sure enough, when they head to City Hall in the basement, they find the police commissioner. Now, after some quick questioning, Dumont was a man of his word. He doesn't give up Hassan. And Sophia thinks that's really, really weird. And even the lieutenant kind of agrees, but he also says, this is a police commissioner. He's not going to lie to us. He does get called over by Youssef, though, who thinks he's finally been able to put this whole thing together. Because the video that they have from the surveillance of the guy wheeling out the trunk to the van, the food delivery guy from the park... And Paul Cernin, they all look a lot alike. They also can't find any information on Paul Cernin other than that Wikipedia page. So Youssef is convinced that all of this has to do with the necklace being stolen from 25 years ago. And while Youssef was kind of cracking the case, Dumont, after a long day, just headed home. The first thing he does when he gets there is takes out all of the cameras. And Hassan is actually at home watching this, live. He then calls up Pellegrini after he takes out all the cameras and tells him that he needs to talk to him about Babacar, Asan's father, because there's a, quote, new party involved. Pellegrini then gives him a place where they should meet up, and they hang up. Shortly after hanging up the phone, his wife walks in the door, and she's thrilled to see that he's okay. He instructs the cheap Amazon Alexa to play a song, but instead of playing the song, it replays the conversation that it overheard between Dumont and Pellegrini. And just to shut it up, Dumont starts smashing it on the ground because he's pissed off knowing that even though he got all those cameras out, Asan is still listening. And that is the reason right there why you don't go cheap with your Amazon Alexa. Thank you so much for watching this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video if you liked it. Hit thumbs down if you thought it sucked. If you don't see the next video up in the end screen, don't worry, it'll be up soon. And please be nice in the comments section. Nobody likes being told they suck, even if it's true. Oh, and you know, sharing's caring.